Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. He said, Don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus, who is crucified. He isn't here. He's risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. The conqueror, victorious king, and Lord over every living thing. They tried to reject him, but he couldn't be ignored. They tried to take him out, but he couldn't be defeated. They said he was dead, but they didn't know the ending. Mighty Savior, he reigns forever. Jesus is alive. Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Resurrection Day, live from the living room. 
We love you guys. We're so excited to just worship the Lord today on this very special day. The day when the Pharisees thought they had stopped Jesus. The enemy thought that they had put an end to the King of Kings, that he could take over and finally have his place. And Jesus surprised the world when he broke forth from the grave and he shattered the chains of sin and death. And now he offers us new life in him through all who believe. And so we're just pumped to worship today. It's a day unlike any other day. And we thank you for joining us in our living room this morning for that session. We're just going to worship the Lord today. We're going to we're going to pray. We're going to hear from the Word of God. We're going to have communion at the end to just remember His sacrifice. And we just pray a blessing on you. So we're going to begin with prayer. Holy Spirit, I just ask now in Jesus' name that you would come and fill our hearts. You would fill our rooms, Lord. We know that we're two or more gathered. You're in the midst, Jesus. So whether we're here another part of town, in another county, in another state, in another country, or between us and them, God, is your presence. So God, let your presence be poured out this morning. Father, we just believe in you and every promise, God. We believe that you are good, that today, God, that you have a special word prepared for us, that, Lord, you want to move among us. You want to bring us into a new reality of your presence. So God, just come. Break down the walls, break down the barriers. God, shatter religious roots, chain shackles that prevent us from coming to the feet of Jesus and experiencing and encountering the presence of Almighty God. Truly better is one day in your courts than a thousand days elsewhere. So we have come to come into your presence to find you here today, to celebrate the risen Lord. So God, we worship you. We praise your name. Be glorified in us today, Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. We just encourage you to comment, to engage, and to participate. We love you guys, and we are so happy you're with us this morning.
for being the only one who could rescue us. God coming down in the flesh to save us, God, when we didn't even know we needed a Savior. What kind of love is this, Lord? Thank you for your love. Thank you for its purity and its fullness, God. A love that we cannot fully comprehend and wrap our minds around. Thank you for paying our debts and stepping into our place for our sins, God. We can't rejoice enough, Lord. Thank you so much, Jesus, for loving us, for enduring the cross for our sakes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And I'm overwhelmed with just love this morning, just feeling the presence of the Lord. And uh, we just had a couple times of prayer, even before gathering with you this morning, just our hearts crying out God's presence. That, that is just an ache of us that we would not allow anything to get in the way between us and the Lord, what God would want to do in us, through us, what He would want to speak, what He'd want to sing over us, that we don't want to miss anything that God has prepared for us when we go to Him, when we spend time with, gather as His people for worship. And I think one of the, one of the biggest things that robs us of what God wants to do when we gather for worship is Sometimes it's a religious struggle, it's tradition, you know, we've always done it this way or I've been taught a certain way and so something new might, might be a little odd or a little different. Uh, being, just being honest, doing church online is a little odd, a little different for me. But whenever we look past the things that are uncomfortable and we can simply just let our hearts seek after the Lord. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 that God rewards those who diligently seek Him. And that's what we want to do is we want to seek the Lord because He can be found today. It's resurrection day, which means He's not dead. He's alive. He's alive forevermore. Amen? He's alive forevermore. That is, that is a truth that will be proclaimed for all eternity. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty who will and is and is to come. What an amazing, amazing reality. And so I just want to encourage you not to let maybe the earliness of this morning, I know that several of you woke up to Easter baskets, gifts, uh, maybe even an Easter egg hunt outside, and so you might have been up a little earlier, and, uh, and maybe the earliness of today might be kind of getting in the way. You might have three or four kids running around and you're trying to watch a screen, but there's a lot of distraction. There's, there are a lot of things that can get in the way for, for our hearts to lean. I just want to encourage you to lean in this morning as best as you can. Believe in your heart. God has a word for you today. God wants to minister. It may have nothing to do with what I say in the next few moments. But God might speak directly to your heart. God might bring a breakthrough in something you've been praying for. God might bring a healing. I believe in the power of prayer. I believe we believe together as a family, as a church, in the power of God to heal, that He that He wants to heal because He's a healer. And no though rather just so that He'll heal, but healing is a result of being in His presence. And that's why we seek Him, because so many amazing blessings can be found in the presence of God. We're going to be in John chapter 17 and John chapter 15 today. We're going to read John chapter 17, verses 9 through 26, and then I'm going to pray. We're going to set up just a, a basic Easter gospel conversation this morning. And, uh, and I just believe that for those of you that are watching, you're connecting, you may have a relationship with God, you may not have a relationship with God. And wherever you're at, that God wants to encounter you today, God wants to speak to you, and I believe even the simplicity of the gospel message is still relevant for you today as it was 2,000 years ago. In John chapter 17, Jesus is praying his last, one of his last prayers before he goes to the cross, before he goes through his passion and the events of the crucifixion. And anytime you hear somebody's last words, when they know they're at the brink of death, they become some of the most important words 
uttered throughout their entire life. And here Jesus is praying to the Father, and he's not just praying about what is to come, but he's praying and interceding for you and I. In John chapter 17, verse 9, it says, My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All who are mine belong to you, and you've given them to me, so they bring me glory. Now I'm departing from the world, and they're staying in this world, but I am coming to you. Holy Father, you've given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name, so that they will be united just as we are. During my time here, I protected them by the power of your name that you gave me. I guarded them so that none of them were lost, except the one headed for destruction, as the scriptures foretold. Now I'm coming to you, and I told them many things while I was with them in this world, so they would be filled with my joy. I've given them your word, and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. And I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for those who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. I've given them the glory you gave me so they may be one as we are. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am, that they can see all the glory you gave me because you've loved me even before the world began. O righteous Father, the world doesn't know you, but I do. And these disciples know you sent me. I have revealed you to them, and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them, and I will be in them. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for your word. God, I thank you for this prayer. There's so much in here, and we don't have the time to unpack it all today. God, I just pray that the word that you want to clear today, Holy Spirit, that you would just speak this morning. God, let all of my creativity and thoughts and, and, and worldly wisdom vanish away, God, and let just your word come. And I just speak over everyone listening this morning, God. I speak peace. I speak your presence, God. I just release, Lord, every spiritual blessing into every home this morning that truly, God, there be new birth today. I pray for the ones that are on the fence of faith, that don't really know what they believe. I pray for those that don't believe at all, that might be watching. I pray, God, for those that have been in church their whole life, but have never had a real-life encounter with you. And so they believe you exist, but it's hard to really believe that you're tangible and that you're alive and that they can have a relationship with you just like they can their very best friend. God, I just pray that your word will be proclaimed, that your will will be done, that you transform us, you draw us into your heart this morning, just as Jesus prayed, that we would be in him as he is in you, and together we would encounter your love this morning. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I think now more than ever before, I mean, just the fact that we're communicating like this and talking online, that because of the quarantine and restrictions in our home that we understand the frustration of the lack of connection probably more now than ever. I mean, just think about how you're watching us online and maybe all of a sudden we're getting ready to hit that part of the chorus of the song that, that you're really looking forward to and then the video freezes and you're like, what, what happened? And so you miss out on that part or, or maybe... You know, what's frustrating as the speaker is there are times where you know, we're doing a video or we're online like this and then the screen will freeze and it'll make the most awkward face possible like... <laughs> and then you get to see that and play that back for everyone. You know, the, the, when the videos are done, they create these little thumbnails and it just broadcasts the most awkward faces and pictures for everyone to see across the world in the, in the internet and so it's awfully not very flattering. But... Connection is vitally important, and especially uh, when we're 
in those moments that we really need connection. We're driving down the road or maybe we're, we're at home and, and we're on the phone call uh, with a doctor and we're on hold and on hold and on hold or maybe we're trying to get to the unemployment office or, or reason uh, with a customer service rep over a bill and we've been on hold for 20, 30, 40, sometimes 60 minutes and then all of a sudden the, the operator comes on and says we're the next in line and so we start getting excited finally we get to connect with someone and then we hear the and you drop the call or you're, you're driving on the road and you pass that spot that's a notorious dead spot and you drop the call and it just it's like ah and you don't know if you want to wreck the car or smash your phone you just like I can't take it anymore I don't, I'm just not gonna deal with it you know I know we all have those points of frustration right now we know that connection is a vital important thing and we all are striving for connection and as we're locked in our homes and, and we're we're told we can do some things, but we can't have that interaction. If you're an introvert, you're probably loving this. You know, you don't like peopling people all day long. You, working from home has been a dream come true to you. Uh, if you're an extrovert, I know like being stuck at home is like torture. You're like a plant withering for lack of nutrients and water. You're just withering, just getting ready to break all the rules just to have some type of physical connection. That there's a part of us that's wired to be connected. Even introverts, after a time, have to connect with other people because God created us to be in community, to connect with one another. We are wired for that. But even though we have all these different kinds of connections, we can connect on the phone, through the internet, we can connect with friends or co-workers, we have all these different things that we do through hobbies or sports and we're involved in one thing after the next. As soon as that connection's over, we're left with that need for connection again. And so we might be in this hobby and when that hobby's done, we're like, oh man, that was great, but maybe there's something else better that would more satisfy me. After we're done talking with this friend, maybe we, if I talk to this friend, that would satisfy me in a more deeper way. Or after this show, I just been watched all of my favorite shows, but yet I have this longing for satisfaction that's not met, so let me find a new show to binge watch and maybe that connection well, will satisfy me. And we go from connection to connection, looking for the thing that will finally satisfy us. Because we try, are also trying to find our identity in all these different things. So what will fulfill us and satisfy us to the core? Maybe you've been working your job for 20, 30 plus years. And you thought, man, if I, once I get my career, once I get promoted, once I have that, then I'll finally know who I am. But yet you still wake up every day questioning, who are you? Is this worth it? Does my life have as much meaning as I hoped and as I thought? And that's because you and I weren't just wired for connection. We were wired to be connected to God. When God created us, He created us to be connected to Him that we would be fully satisfied in that relationship. Not that we just know who God is or we could pray to Him every once in a while, but we would live in the reality of His presence, and that we would find our complete and full satisfaction in our lives in Him. Jesus, in John chapter 15, verses 7 through 11, Jesus says that if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, He's talking to His disciples, He says, if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. Now, he's not saying God is a cosmic vending machine where you can put your quarter in and get your Sprite or get your Coke or get whatever that you're asking him for. God's not just up there to answer prayers and give us what we want. He's saying, if you remain in me, if, if your heart is connected with my heart, the whole intention of your life, the direction of your life is going to be focused on and centered in my will. And my will is good. My, my heart for you is good. And when you're connected with me, you can ask for anything that you want because what you want is what I want. And I will give you the very things that I want. And Jesus is saying, if you remain in me, if you stay connected, then God will answer your prayer without question because what you and he want are the same thing. Verse 8, when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. And this brings great joy to my Father. When we are producing the things in our lives that God desires, we are His disciples. 
Verse 9, he says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. It's a choice to remain. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in him. I told you all these things. So he's, he's telling us this. If you don't just agree with me, but you do what I say, you follow through, you follow me in faith, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. You're pursuing God with your heart. Here's what he says. He says that you would be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy would overflow. That no longer will there be this pit uh, of questioning, this pit of, uh, of need, uh, like a need for connection, that this, this unfillable void that your soul is seeking to be satisfied, God said it's going to erupt. Not only are you going to be filled, but it's going to overflow in your life. That God's love, His heart, is going to be just evident all around you, all in you. Your purpose, meaning, everything is going to flow from this place. That's an amazing, amazing thing. That the mechanism that God created when he spoke life into existence for you to be fully and completely satisfied and for your life to be able to affect others in the most positive way is a life that is connected to God. Jesus said that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life, life overflowing, life abundantly. This connection to God is what's about an overflowing life filled and overflowing with blessing. And that's what God desires for each and every one of us. But something happened, the dawn of creation, that fractured all of that. That got in the way of what God's will was. Back in the beginning of time, in the Garden of Eden, the serpent lied and convinced the woman and the man to sin against God. And disobedience unleashed sin into the world. And sin broke fellowship with God. No longer did we have this connection naturally that God created us to experience. Now, we are all born into this world disconnected from God. Not connected, but disconnected. And we've been trying to get that connection back in various ways. So rather than being filled with joy from birth and just brought into this life, filled with the abundant, overflowing love and joy of God, we're brought in to a life filled with hardship, with pain. We often walk through a very difficult, painful life. We're continually wrestling with shame and guilt and regret over things that we've done or things that have happened to us. So no matter what God has asked us to do, whether it's through the law and religion in the Old Testament or simple commands just as loving God and obeying His commandments, simple things that Jesus has asked us to do, we still find ourselves falling short. Why? Because we still wrestle with sin. We still wrestle with this nature that is in opposition to who God is. In John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus says, Yes, I am the vine, you are the branch. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit, but for apart from me you can do nothing. See, there's nothing in ourselves that can actually produce the fruit that bring about that rich and satisfying life, that life overflowing, that connection to God. It doesn't matter how religious we are, you could have been born in a church building, physically born in a church building, and have met service ever since you were born, and that's still not enough to get connected to God. You could have been baptized as a baby. You could have recited all of the verses. You could have been confirmed and confirmed and confirmed. You could be uh, have a heritage of, of Christian family back going down 60 generations, and that's still not enough to be connected to God. God gave Israel 600 plus laws in the Old Testament and said, if you do this, you'll be holy as I am holy, and yet they could not fulfill that on their own because sin created disconnect where God desired connection. A part of Jesus, our connection to the vine, we remain disconnected. Jesus came so that we could encounter a divine connection. So that we could have a divine connection restoring us back to what God originally intended, to who God originally created us to be. And we cannot achieve 
this on our own. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says it's by grace that God saved us through faith. Not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. Not by works lest we should boast about it. You cannot do enough good to get that connection. It is a connection that comes as a gift of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus in the beginning of John 15 tells us that any branch that does not produce fruit is pruned and cast into the fire. And this is what happened. We started a creation connected to the vine. He is the vine, we're the branches. And sin came and it caused corruption in the branch. And that branch was then connected from the vine. It's be just like getting a, an infection in the body, like a staph infection and beginning in your fingers and in your hand and the medical... Uh, you know, professionals could be treating you as much as possible trying to get that infection under wraps. But if it, if it doesn't get cured and it continues to spread before long, they begin removing parts of your body to try to save the rest of the body. And this is what happened to all of humanity. Because we became disconnected with God, we became separated. We got separated because the sin in us became infectious and was unresolvable. In Isaiah 53, 6, the prophet Isaiah says, All of us like sheep have strayed away. We left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. All of us have made the decision to rebel against God. From little white lies to maybe major sins, we all have this nature we wrestle with. We're all like that wandering sheep. We could have stayed in the protection of the flock and the shepherd, but we chose to wander away. And so what did God do to provide a way for us to come back, to be reconnected? He sent His Son. He put on His Son all of the sin, all of the brokenness in the world, all the griefs, all the sorrows, all the pain was laid on Jesus. He bore it on the cross. And in the cross, He is crying out, It is finished. He completes the payment for our sin. Just like whenever... You get a speeding ticket and you get a fine and you stand before the judge. The judge is going to find you guilty. But if somebody pays your fine, the judge can freely let you go without any type of penalty because that fine has been paid. And that's what happened with Jesus on the cross. You were guilty in your sins, but Jesus came and paid your fine. And now God can rightfully let you go through placing your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. This is why he came to pay our debt. So once again, reconnected to the vine. John 17, verses 19 through 21, Jesus said, even before he was crucified, he said, I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. Jesus came willingly to give himself so you could be made holy as he is holy, so that you could be reconnected and restored. Verse 20, he says, I'm praying not only for these disciples, but for those who ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you, so they may be in us, so the world will believe that you sent me. Jesus came so that you could be connected to him, and not just be connected to him, but be placed in him. And as God was in Christ, and you would be placed in Jesus. Together, you would become united again with your Heavenly Father. What an amazing, amazing reality. Beloved, that God so loved that He gave us one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. God loved you. He pursued you, and He's pursuing you now. Some of you feel far off from God. You feel like, that God's not anywhere near you, that, that you may be messed up so much or maybe that, that there's just something wrong with you and, and God's just out there and how could God love you? All these questions, all these discouraging accusations come in your mind when you think of the love of God. But beloved, God knew you before you created and He came for you on a rescue mission. Jesus came that you could be restored, that you could be saved that the dirtiness that you bear could be cleansed, that the filthy rags could become white as snow. Jesus sacrificed his life. He paid your fine. On Good Friday, Jesus paid the fine. On Saturday, he cleansed the jail when he descended. And on Sunday, he shocked the world when he demonstrated to everyone for all time that he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. 
that he is Lord of all creation. And when the ground shook and the stone was rolled away, the glory of God was revealed as the sun arose from the grave. And now his invitation is to all who hear the gospel message. Those who would repent their sin, going their own way, turn to Jesus in faith, can receive eternal life. But here's the most amazing thing. That eternal life doesn't begin after death. Eternal life begins now. Because when you receive Jesus... He sends the Holy Spirit to fill your life and to give you a new purpose, a new heart, a new mind, and set you on the path to live the greatest adventure you could ever live with God Almighty. 1 John 5.12 says, Whoever has the Son has life, but whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. John 3.36 says, And anyone who believes in God's Son has eternal life, Anyone who doesn't obey the Son will never experience eternal life, but remains under God's angry judgment. I'm going to invite my wife to come and begin playing as we transition. But I just want to say, it's hard enough to say, I believe. You must make an earnest, heartfelt confession. It's hard enough just to say, I believe, but true salvation comes not just by saying I believe, it's by changing from just speaking an agreement to actually living it out. You must make an earnest, heartfelt confession of faith in Jesus. You must begin living in partnership with the Lord, following Jesus. That doesn't look like religion. Religion says you have to attend church, you have to do all this process in order to become part. God didn't save you. He didn't give his life so you could become connected to a church ministry or a church tradition. Some faith backgrounds believe you have to be confirmed in all these things in order to become part of the family of God. When the Bible simple message, the simple gospel says, turn from your sin. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Believe that God's raised him from the dead and you will be saved. Jesus promised that if you love him and obey his commandments, you'd discover the life God always intended to live. It's a life of significance, overflowing with joy. And that's what God has for you. He has a desire. God, think about this. The Father wants to be connected to you. Jesus wants to be connected to you. You simply have to respond to his invitation to come. You must choose to enter into that divine connection by placing your faith and trust in Jesus. And the most amazing truth, once you're connected, there is no disconnection. Once you're connected to God, there is no disconnection. There's no signal drop. There's no busy, there's no point where you're traveling on the road then all of a sudden you hit a dead spot and then it's gone and you have to start all over. The Bible says that the righteous person gets knocked down seven times and gets up on the eighth. There's continual connection, continual fellowship. Jesus has promised I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That my thoughts toward you will always be good. In Romans chapter 8, Paul even goes as far to say, since God did not spare even his own son but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us from God who has chosen us for his own. No one, for God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or persecuted or are hungry or destitute or in danger or threat of death? As the scripture says, your sake we're killed every day as being slaughtered like sheep. No, beloved. Despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Overwhelming victory is ours. And I am convinced, verse 38, that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither our fears for today or worries or tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Beloved, God gave everything he could he gave his son. Jesus gave everything he could 
He gave His life so that you could have everything you would ever need. Being divinely connected to the heart of the Father. I'm just going to invite you to close your eyes right where you're at. It doesn't matter if your room is filled or if you're all alone. I just invite you to close your eyes right wherever you are. If you're here today and you don't feel connected, maybe there's never been a time for you truly gave God your heart. You've been through all the religious stuff, but you've not truly experienced what the Bible says is being born again, a connection to God, being filled with His Spirit and His life overflowing in your life. If you've never experienced that, right where you are, I'm going to invite you to pray with me. There's no magic in this prayer, but if you believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and God raised him from the dead. As you pray, you confess this with your mouth and you believe in your heart. God's going to do a work in your life. God's going to bring an encounter in your life that you've never experienced. So you pray this with me. Pray it aloud. Who cares who can hear you? Who cares who's around? You pray it aloud now, confidently and in faith. Say, Father, thank you for sending Jesus. I admit I have lived my own way. But God, I ask you to forgive me of every sin. And today, I'm choosing to follow Jesus. I give you my heart. Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died and rose again. And I thank you for loving me enough to pursue me. Fill me with your spirit. I want to be born again. I want to be connected to you. And this I pray in the name of Jesus. If you prayed that prayer, we just bless you in Jesus' name. We bless you. We're so thankful for you. We encourage you to write in the comment section that you made a decision to turn to Christ, that you received Jesus today. But I, even more so, I want to pray for you specifically right now. God, you know the hearts of those who believe. Maybe someone has been away from you. They've been running from you. Even though they both have believed in you, they've made decisions in the past. God, I pray for them right now in Jesus' name that your Holy Spirit would reach out and touch them in Jesus' name. God, I pray for those that prayed for the first time, Lord, that your Holy Spirit fill them right now, God, that you would enter into their reality, Lord, that you would touch them, God, fill them with peace, let the, the presence of your Holy Spirit just cover them like a warm blanket, God, and begin filling them with joy, that laughter would begin to erupt and overflow, God, that, that you would just touch them deeply, God, there are some that have just been so hard-hearted over the difficulties and pains that they've had in their lives. They've, they've tried to train themselves to be hard so that they can't be affected and that they can't be hurt. But God, I pray against all that hardness that the enemy has caused to rise up. God, we shatter that in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that you would touch them in the deep place, in the deep place that only you can touch, God, and begin bringing new life, bring healing, God. Let them feel your unconditional love right now in Jesus' name. God, I pray for those that are wearing heavy burdens, Lord, and those burdens are even manifesting in infirmity and physical ailments. God, I just pray a releasing of that bondage right now in Jesus' name. We break that off by the blood and the power of the name of Jesus. I just declare strongholds broken. God, I command the enemy to flee and to go in Jesus' name. That the depression, that struggle with depression is broken off in Jesus' name. Anxiety is broken off discouragement, guilt, shame, condemnation. God, all these things the enemy uses against us. Just be broken off now in Jesus' name. Beloved, rise up in your identity. We call forth your true identity as a son and daughter of the Most High God, that you are the beloved of God. You are the chosen before time. You are seated in the heavenly realms. To you is every spiritual blessing given. 
God, you have set them apart. You have purposed them. You have called them by name. God, that you have a plan for them that's for good and not disaster to give them a future and a hope. God, I just release and impart that blessing, God, that peace would now fill their lives. Lord, that they wouldn't worry about tomorrow because they know that if you have them today, that you will have their tomorrow in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for the gospel and the invitation. And I just pray, God, that we would not be silent, but we would declare you with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul. Lord, I hear the Spirit's voice. God, I pray for the one who's contemplating suicide. This is a difficult time for you. There's been a lot of struggle. There's been something happened in your life or a series of things happening in your life and you're debating on whether or not it's worth living. God wants to tell you, He died so you don't have to. He died so that you could live. And if you trust Him, if you give Him your heart, God is going to do something in you right now. I just feel from the Spirit of God that He is speaking directly to you. I don't know who you are, but God is speaking to you right now. Just call out to Him. Maybe you missed the prayer a second ago. You don't have to pray that exact prayer. Just call Say, Jesus, save me. The Bible says, all who call in the name of the Lord will be saved. Just call out a simple prayer of faith. Lord, I give my heart. Save me today. God's going to wreck you right now. He's going to break off. I just command all that fear, all that despondency, every accusation to come off right now in Jesus' name. And we just release freedom to you and life to you in Jesus' name. Oh, praise God. Praise the Lord. God, we worship you this morning. Thank you, Lord. You're struggling with a physical infirmity. You're struggling with a sickness, pains in your body. Just reach your hands out to the Lord and let his love wash over you this morning. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we were healed receive the healing of the Lord. Lord, I proclaim healing to all who are raising their hands right now. That your angels would go and touch them, God. That your spirit would administer healing power, Jesus. That your blood would overflow. Grace be upon grace, God. Grace upon grace. Glory upon glory. Lord, you're so good. Lord, I just pray that you would touch the one with back pain right now. In Jesus' name, let it be healed. I also see a shoulder, God. There's a shoulder. I just pray that you touch it right now in Jesus' name. Full mobility, pain. Pain be released. Go in Jesus' name. Full mobility, come in Jesus' name. If you're having shoulder problems, I just encourage you to check it right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for the prodigals wayward sons and daughters. I pray for the mom who is heartbroken this morning because of decisions their children are making. Lord, I pray for the mom and I pray, God, a return to the children. And the anointing of that spirit of Elijah would just come on that their family, Lord, that returns the children to their parents and their parents to their children. God, there be a uniting right now in Jesus' name. God, I pray for the family that's just been in turmoil for generations. The siblings can't get along. The relatives can't get along. God, I pray that you would break that generational bondage now in Jesus' name. And that you bring restoration. 
that forgiveness would flow, Lord, and that just as you rose from the death, when, when, when all things looked impossible, you rose through the, impo through the impossible, God. You made the impossible possible, God, that that would happen this morning, that there'd be new birth in that family, new life, new love, new forgiveness, God, and that relationships they never knew that they could have, God, would be restored right now in Jesus' name. thank you for my family. I thank you for families of Vertical Life Church. I thank you for everyone watching. I thank you, God, that you're still working, you're still touching, you're still moving. God, I, I just see, I just have that on my heart. There's someone right now, God, that's, they're wrestling with you. They're wondering, do you see them? Right now, that's what they're thinking. They're thinking, does God even see me? God sees you. God sees you. And he's inviting you into that relationship, inviting you into connection. He sees you, he knows your name, and he loves you. Give him your heart this morning. Give him your heart. Lord, I thank you. As we continue to worship, God, that you'd be glorified, that you continue to work and move in the lives of the people as you're working in here, as you're to us. Spirit, do what only you can do. I praise you in Jesus' name.
love is extravagant and it doesn't make sense. We're going to celebrate his love now through the communion service. And so I invite you to get your crackers, your bread, and your grape juice. And uh, we're going to remember the Lord's death together as a family. All right, gather up family. We're happy to oh, throw grape juice on the carpet. Don't worry, we'll get that, we'll get that out. Um, we're happy to celebrate Jesus with you. Come on in, Tom, we can't see you. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll move up like this, move up. There you go, there we are. So... We want to celebrate, take the bread, the bread was broke, representing the broken body of the Lord. When he broke it, he blessed it, and he said, this is my body that was given for you. As often as you eat it, do it to remember me. So Lord, we bless the body of Jesus. We thank you so much. And just as we look back to what you've accomplished through the cross, we also look forward to the new bodies that you'll give us when you return. And so, God, we pray that you would bless this bread, that it would bring communion and connection to you this morning, an intimacy that we've not experienced before. And we just eat it now, Lord, in your honor. In his name, amen. The same night he took the cup, the wine, and he blessed it. He said, this is my blood that was poured out for you. As often as you drink it, do it to remember me. And so, Lord, we just lift up the cup and we bless the wine and the fruit of the vine. Lord, that represents the beautiful blood that was spilled for my Lord and Savior. That by your stripes we are healed. That through the shedding of blood, there can be remission of sins. That the fine has been paid. The debt has been canceled. And the slate has been made clean, as white as snow. So Lord, we thank you for the blood, and we drink now, God, in your honor and in your glory, proclaiming the death of Christ until you return. And Lord, we just are so thankful that we get to be your sons and daughters, and that Jesus is returning for us, and that we'll get to spend eternity with you forever and forever and forever. God, we just acknowledge that eternal life begins now, as we trust in you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. May our love never grow cold and our joy never die. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Amen, church. We are thankful that you joined us this morning, Easter Sunday, yes. Resurrection Sunday. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements. As always, you can give online through uh, your cell phone just by texting to the number that will be on the screen and uh, text the word GIVE to this number and uh, GIVE, just put any dollar amount and that will go directly to our church as well as you can go to our website which is www.blchurch.tv forward slash GIVE and you can give via PayPal there. We appreciate your faithfulness and supporting the work and ministry of Vertical Life Church, especially during this uh, awkward and, uh, and uh, strange time that we're living in. Also, uh, coming up April 11th will be the next food truck giveaway. It'll be at West Vienna United Methodist Church. April 11th. Uh, April, April, 
Oh, April 11th. Oh, that was yesterday. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, but we are going to have another uh, another food truck coming up, uh, an extra truck. Uh, with more details will uh, be posted on our Facebook page. And that's probably what I was thinking about, so forgive me for uh, talking about yesterday. It's but quarantine uh, life. Yeah, it's quarantine life. Um, but uh, if you are interested in volunteering for any type of food distribution, we do have connections that are uh, still passing out food all week long uh, for the kids in uh, the Clio area. And so we will get you in contact with the coordinator to serve. Um, yeah. If you are looking for a way to get out of the house and have some human connection, this would be a great way to do that. So definitely private message our page. We'll get you in contact with the coordinator and get you on that rotation. I know they would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Also coming up, um, I believe on the announcement slides, it was the day, um, not this coming Thursday, but next Thursday should be uh, the 23rd, 24th ish, somewhere in there. I don't have it off the top of my head, but we're going to start Zoom groups for um, a life group study. We can't meet together, but we can still meet online. We're going to be beginning a new study uh, in Psalm 23, really appropriate for this time, utilizing the technology that we have in a partnership uh, with our, our church friends, Community Church of God. They've given us access to some special online curriculum, so we thank them for that. We'll be doing a, a live Zoom group. Uh, we'll do the study um, together. The video will all be online. We'll do it all through the Zoom application. And if you are interested in being a part of that group, just private message our page with your email address and we'll get you the downloadables ahead of time so you can print off the worksheets and uh, the things that you'll need for that group. I'm really excited for that uh, and um, I know that's going to be a blessing to you. The more uh, we can connect, the more that we can continue to grow in the Lord together, the more we want to do that. So uh, we're excited for that next phase. If you have a decision today or God has been dealing with you, uh, we definitely want to keep you in prayer. We want to know about it. Please uh, message. You can put it in the comments or a private message. Just let us know. Uh, we just want to celebrate decisions made, a breakthrough. If, if you receive healing, we want to know. Yes. We want to celebrate. Testimonies are powerful. They, they mm -hmm. encourage us and continue to encourage other people to pursue more of God. And, um, and we just want to uh, celebrate that with you. If, you. if you're dealing with things, we want to pray for you. We will not be having our prayer broadcast tonight because we, we're going to spend that with our family. We want you to spend this time with your family, but we will do our prayer live next Sunday night at 7 as we have been doing and we will continue to do so um, as uh, we are remain quarantined. We just want to encourage you to stay safe, be healthy, be smart. Anything else you want to share? No. No? I'm good. You good? Yep. All right. So <laughs> we love you and yes. bless you. Yes. May the Lord bless you, keep you, may his face shine upon you, in peace, this yes, happy amen. Easter. If you had an egg hunt, post online, yes. tag us. We want to see that. We want to connect. We want to celebrate together. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Goodbye, church. Bye. We love you.